Hey everybody and welcome back to another video and today we are discussing bodyboard basics and more specifically the bottom turn. So as you guys have seen before, I put out a video on bodyboard basics. Now this video was meant to be just a basic video on bottom turns, hand positionings, body positionings and weight distribution on the board. Today we're going to dive more deeply into the bottom turn which I feel is fundamentally the most important move in bodyboarding. This is the move that sets up for all your speed lines, your maneuvers, your barrels as well as just generally getting down the wave. I'm going to be talking about three steps in the bottom turn as well as discussing a general bottom turn, the direction in which you're going to go on the wave, the scoop which is needed in more heavy or waves of more consequence as well as driving after you have done the bottom turn. So let's get into it. So if you guys haven't been able to see the bodyboard basics video that I put out about two years ago Click the link up here and you guys can go and check that out first. It might help you in just further understanding exactly what I'm talking about when I discuss the bottom turn a little bit further. So first off, let's talk about direction. Now the direction I am referring to is whether you're going to be paddling straight as if you're going straight into the beach or if you're going to be paddling at a different direction across the wave. Generally speaking, the steeper or heavier the wave is, the more straight you're going to be paddling on the wave. When we look at this wave here in Hawaii, which is probably one of the heaviest waves I've ever surfed and the biggest wave that I've ever surfed out at Pipe, if you see exactly how straight I am paddling on this wave and we stop it here, there is two reasons for that. Firstly, I am waiting for the barrel to barrel over me and secondly, the positioning that I need to go down the wave to stop from sliding out is straight. So. I'm going to keep going on this one and stop it again here and just to show you my leg positionings more specifically my inside leg now this is where you really got to push your knee down and force that bottom back corner of the board very much into the water to start spraying off the side as we go further down into this clip here again I've stopped it and I'm going to show you exactly where the outside leg would be and how you're supposed to split your legs. This will allow you to gain as much traction on the water and allow you to stop from sliding out. If we follow on for this video, I get to the bottom here, you can see that outside leg is bouncing wildly, but the inside leg is very much planted and allowing this scoop to actually happen. And if we go further, you can see at this point here, I am straightening up and really engaging the rail, leaning forward, getting as much speed through this big section of the wave, and then as it blows out, I go riding off the top. And then secondly, we're going to talk about flat waves. Now flat waves allow you to get an angle on a speed line or when paddling into the wave. This is way better and it allows you to actually get down the line and get to where you want to go, whether that be through the barrel section or if you have to wait and actually get into the barrel before and then look down the line at that direction you need to travel. This is very much up to how you want to ride the wave and what you want to do on that wave, which will determine what angle or what direction you're going to face when paddling onto this wave. I get this question a bunch of times and I'm just going to show you here a wave that I caught up the west coast that was more of a flatter wave and allowed me to actually direct myself across the wave to start gaining speed down the line and looking at that section that I want to hit. As you can see, this wave is completely different to the previous wave from Hawaii and you can actually see the direction that I've chosen to take across the wave as opposed to riding straight down the face. Now this is going to start to give me a lot of down the line speed and as you can see, it's clean lines and trimming I come up a little bit and actually engage the bottom turn a second time here before using all that speed off the bottom to project into the lip and do this reverse and land it.
When the waves are a lot heavier and a lot bigger, you're going to be wanting to perform the scoop. Now the scoop is a very difficult maneuver to get, but once you've got it, you will have it always. It is something that allows you to really slow yourself down while traveling straight down the wave. And then once you get to the bottom of the wave, you are able to actually engage the speed, lean forward on the board and actually travel through these barrels. When you're riding these bigger waves, the idea is to stay on the inside rail and drop your knee into the water, which will slow yourself down. Once you get to the point where you are at the bottom of the wave, you must release all of those things and lean forward. The idea behind that is to gain speed, but remember to lift the nose up. If you lean too far forward, you're going to nose dive and the consequences could be quite serious. Whereas if you're sitting more centered on the board, this will allow you to drive through the wave and keep that speed up the whole way through. Now driving goes hand in hand with bottom turns. And this is the fundamental behind getting into the barrels and keeping that speed or going for those air moves with the speed. Now the perfect place to explain this would be pipeline. And again, as you have already seen on that first video, this is a second video from pipe where I will explain exactly every moment that goes through this wave as I'm dropping into the barrel. When we look at this wave, it is a straight line into the wave as well as the leg movements, which we are going to mostly focus on in this clip. When we look at it, you can see I am completely out of the water here, but as soon as I land again, it is an engage of the inside knee more than anything else. And again, a lot of weight on that back left hand corner. As we go further into this wave, you can actually see how much I am dragging the back legs here with all that spray coming off. And the outside leg is kind of just hanging there on the side to adjust if I need it. When we go further into this wave, you can see the scoop is done at this point and I'm actually leaning forward and setting up for this barrel. You can see how little I am dragging my legs or anything else in the water. And it is a very clean, sharp line off the water here and just ride through this pit. And you will see as it blows out here, I come flying out of the barrel with a ton of speed and you are able to pretty much do any move with that much speed. Now, when we look at waves that are completely different as in the wedging waves, these waves can actually help you and assist you in gaining a hell of a lot more speed. The wedge will then push across and allow you to actually angle the board to bottom turn off the wedge or come over the top of the wedge and actually get that speed line into the wave. This allows you to go for bigger air moves as you are gaining a lot more speed and a lot more drive through the wave. Please remember that none of these bottom turns should be done with fast jerking motions, but must rather be focused on clean, smooth lines that are drawn out and allow you to time the sections completely. This is not something you're going to get in short spaces of time, but something you need to work on over and over. Again, I have included this clip from caves, which just shows you exactly how you can manipulate yourself on the wave, riding that wedge and gaining as much speed as you can to hit those air moves. So again, with this wave, the wedge is your best friend. It is going to give you a lot of speed and you can actually manipulate the board and your direction a lot easier when you are traveling in that direction. So I have started on the peak, as you can see here, and as we roll into this one, you can just see that my eyes are already on that section. I'm getting a ton of speed from this wave that's pushing across as the wedge comes across. And I'm making a very smooth bottom turn all the way up into the lip. And this is going to then throw all that speed into the air and get that launch, which we always love. Lastly, I want to discuss big waves versus small waves. Now on the bigger waves, you're going to be wanting to, to control a lot more of the wave and your motion with your legs. When we look at smaller waves, we are able to manipulate ourselves a little bit easier and actually use our own body weight to engage the inside rail as opposed from using your legs to drag. And this will also allow you to keep your speed from paddling onto the wave. Although the wave is going to lift you up and kind of push you forward, you're going to want to sit on that inside rail and make sure that your distribution of weight is equal. 
Now I did go through this before in the bodyboard basics video. So if you haven't understood any of this, please go back and refer to that video on weight distribution as well as body positioning. Please remember that the merch is available online on boogieeveryday.com. You guys can go on there and check it out. There is a bunch of new stuff happening this month as well as some cool things happening towards the end of the month for that Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale. So stay tuned to the Boogie Every Day Instagram page as we will be uploading everything on there and you guys can see all the available discount codes as well as any giveaways that we have to share. And if you guys enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I hope you guys have all learned something today about bottom turns and how fundamental this maneuver and this setup tool is to getting bigger boosts and enjoying longer, deeper barrels. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next video.